Are you guys ready to see the tank? Okay, this is six weeks on. Da, 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 da. Hey, what's up creatures? It's Em and I'm back today with an update for you. If you watched my previous videos, you might have seen that I set up a salt water aquarium and honestly, it was the most daunting decision I've taken in the longest time as far as animals go. I honestly feel like I will never be done learning when it comes to aquatics. It's just mind-blowing the amount of time and dedication it goes into starting a saltwater tank. With that in mind, if you're thinking of starting a saltwater aquarium, I have some tips that I wish I did when starting my saltwater aquarium. So hopefully I'll be able to give you some hints and tips to make your experience a little less painful than what mine has been so far. To be fair, mine hasn't exactly been a painful experience, it's just hindsight is, is brilliant and there's certain things that I wish I had done slightly differently so I'm gonna be updating you on those and also just giving you a general tour of how the tank is doing I really really hope that you're going to enjoy it hey bae bae Grin Grinchy's loose and as I'm filming Danny comes home from work with the kookaburra <laughs> oh who's that kook oh kook is that you look he's angry oh wait kook spotted Grinchy Grinchy. Kook and Grinchy cannot hang out together. Kook is in fact on a lead on my hand so he can't get off but he's just come home from work so time to put him away. I will be right back. We apologize for this interrupting broadcast. So back to our video. Today's video is sponsored by Runaway and Runaway produce incredible apps and VR games and they are all based in nature. If you saw my previous video you'll know that I've been nothing but obsessed with Splash. Splash is a gorgeous immersive game and it's basically up to you to repopulate a reef. Splash is a stunning ocean adventure game where your mission is to care for an underwater sanctuary and repopulate the reef. The app features real species of fish and by raising fish and feeding them the correct foods, you can establish various species and unlock new, rarer marine creatures to learn facts about, hatch, raise, care for and release. Collect and position coral to help you collect coins and food and unlock new parts of the reef to increase how many fish you can raise at once. I want to see your reef. If you're also playing, take a snap of your reef and send it to me on Twitter. You can also show off your reef by tagging the official Splash Twitter, at PlaySplashGame. You might even get a retweet. If you want to join in, you can download Splash for free. Search for Splash in your app store to unlock a free underwater paradise. Check out my description box below for more details. Do you guys keep aquariums at home, in particular saltwater aquariums? If you do and you have any top tips to share with anybody else, whether they are experienced or newbies, share your comment down below and just share the knowledge because, oh my goodness, aquatics are not for the faint-hearted and there's always something to learn. Even if it's just a fact about a particular anemone or about a particular kind of fish, pop it down below, you never know who it could help. Stay until the end where I'll be talking to the amazing Jenny from Solid Gold Aquatics. There's a whole world of fish keeping that you never even knew existed if you're not already in the fish keeping world yourself. Hey creatures, um, super exciting day today. Oh, can you see the excitement? The reason why it's exciting is because the tank has been going for not one, not two, but three weeks and everyone seems to be acclimating so, so well to being at home. But I want to get more live rock because everyone is still a bit squished and although they're, they're doing okay they could do much better if they had a bit more room and so I definitely want to build up the tank a little bit more so we're going back to absolutely fish today it's a glorious lovely warm day spring is almost in the air and um, we're gonna go and have a look at some more rock and uh, potentially some more potentially potentially more cleanup crew as well because um, we've had a little bit of algae growing in there and uh, rather than actually using like an algae control I'd rather just get a couple more uh, crabs in there so I'm gonna go speak to the guys there see what they suggest and then hopefully we'll have an even healthier tank than ever before Mwah. goodbye that is a very cool anemone and an anemone and an anemone and an anemone Okay, don't hurt yourself. I, I just have to remember, I have a nano tank, so I can't overstock it. But... He fits in the nano. Oh, he'd fit in the nano? You wanna, you wanna come home? 
microphone. You're about the size of my nano, actually. <laughs> All right, so we finally got some more pieces of live rock, and we're going to be building this out a lot more down here towards the bottom and upwards as well, just to give us a bit more real estate to play with, because obviously all the coral and the anemones are kind of on top of each other. We're using some forceps to move out some of the coral, some of the anemones. Uh, they're not going to be happy right now. They are going to definitely be very upset for the next couple of hours, but it will be much better in the long run just to get this done. And this I do not like to see. We have slime algae. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world to have slime algae. Obviously you want to deal with it, but it's very, very common. Um, so we're going to be dealing with that. You know, we have to up the water changes a little bit more. We're gonna point these filter outlets downwards to get a little bit more current going down here because this is kind of a dead area. It's a little bit stagnant, which is really contributing to allowing the algae to grow. So the reason why it's Danny's hands, his lovely model hands in there and not mine, is because I've actually been using a very mild steroid cream on my fingers recently because I've had some eggs on my fingers um, so I've been using a very mild steroid cream on there and um, I don't want to put my hands in for the next sort of couple of days just in case so because um, obviously the the tank is very sensitive so Danny's got his beautiful hands in there let's look at Danny's model hands Danny's model hands beautiful Danny's been scaring me saying how when he used to deal with aquariums in the past at work that sometimes they'd get bristle worms coming in on their live rock and I just don't want bristle worms. Tell me there's no bristle worms. Ah, no bristle worms. Okay. Already, this is just looking so much more exciting than where it was before. Um, we've got this beautiful ledge. It kind of reminds me of like an underwater pride rock in a way. Um, so it looks gorgeous. Danny's doing an amazing job. Do you want to see something exciting? Ta-da! It's a bubble anemone because obviously I have my two clownfish and they do have two anemones in there already but none that they can really interact with just yet. And these anemones get quite large and we're gonna put this one center stage. Um, these anemones are great. They actually occur in the Pacific Ocean and the clownfish are going to love this anemone when they're bigger. So thank you guys over at Absolutely Fish for helping me pick out an anemone for my clownfish. Danny, what, what happened? I got stung. You got stung by what? I don't know, some little alien living in this. The alien? This landscape. Was it, was it that green one? I think it was that green sticky guy. He's still giving me the finger. Oh. Like, he's giving me the anemone finger. Now our bubble anemone, this is gonna be super exciting, is gonna sit center stage over here. Now, <laughs> um, I know this is really funny to say. I don't know if you guys watching know much about aquariums, but with anemone, Sometimes an enemy will decide to just up and move. So we're gonna put him, her, it, center stage right here, but it's gonna move where it wants to move for the first couple of days, so. That should be interesting to see if it moves. It's quite common for an anemone to move around. This bubble tip anemone has a pedal disc which acts like an anchor, so it's going to want to find an area with a crevice to secure itself into. An enemy can take days or even weeks to settle down. An 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 enemy. So our bubble tip anemone has just been placed on his new ledge. Hopefully he will continue to enjoy it there. If not, he will move where he wants to go. Um, and for the first hour or so, we're just going to keep the filter off because we don't want to disrupt him. I know the bubble tip anemones look very very robust but the truth is that they are literally just mostly water and they are very light and very delicate and if you do have um, a filter going they can just get blown around or god forbid like get sucked into your outlets or your intake. I think our bubble sucking. tip is like no no please stay where you are bubble tip I will be nice to you forever I swear. All right, we have just finished reshuffling this uh, this aquarium and uh, the coral do have a lot more space now that they've got more rubble, but let me just make it clear that this is not how um, a happy aquarium should look. Everything is still um, settling in because we literally just uprooted them for the second time in a month. You know, we, the first time when we brought them home um, a couple of weeks ago and then again today. So it's gonna take them a few days to settle down. There he goes. <laughs> Here goes my anemone. He's like, no! He's like, there's no place like home! There's no place like home! <laughs> Look at him, he's totally different now. He's like, no! That's since we put the filter back on, which of course we have to do. And, oh wait, no, he's coming back to life. Ah, fascinating! That's wicked! 
This anemone had that entire ledge to himself and now he wants that crevice where all the other coral is. Can you just please go back on your ledge? You were so nice right there in the center. No, one of these and then the knees is doing his own thing. He was right at the front and uh, I say he, she, it is now at the back there. And um, it's really made itself at home. Look at that, it's, it's really tucked in right there in the crevice. Guys, look at this little starfish. What, what a score. We did not buy this starfish. It just came in the live rock. That's insane. That's great. Are you guys ready to see the tank? Okay, this is six weeks on. Da, 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 da. Oh, that was a very nice transition. Here we are. Here is how my saltwater tank looks. Oh, why are we still so gross looking? Give me a second. Oh wait, no, it's on the inside. <laughs> Fail. So here we are six weeks on. This is my 15 gallon salt water aquarium and overall things are doing pretty well. There are a couple of issues in here which I'm going to be talking you through but let's start over here at this section. Down here I have something very exciting to show you. This down here I believe might be snail eggs. If they're not snail eggs then do let me know but I'm just making the assumption that those are snail eggs yesterday some of the snails that I had in here were being super super active and all sort of con converging down here which is why that leads me to believe that those are actually snail eggs going a little bit higher up here we've got some corals and they're all doing so well I've got a real variety in here there's some soft corals there's some hard corals that there is my bubble tip anemone and as I said it's got its pedal disc just underneath you can't actually see it now I'll see if I can actually get some footage of the pedal disc from before when it was moving around it basically looks like the top of a jellyfish um, and now it feels nice and secure I'm sure it will probably continue to travel but it's been a couple of weeks now and it hasn't traveled I think that the bubble tip anemone whew, has settled this soft coral over here is probably one of my favorites it's so eye-catching and beautiful that slimy just neon toxic waste green color I, to me it's just very appealing. Does anybody else find toxic waste green appealing? I'm a bit worried about this coral at the back here because it does seem to be bleaching somewhat but to be fair it hasn't been bleaching from when I got it home. It was already bleached when I got it home so I'm hoping that maybe it might be able to bounce back. I'm not entirely sure but it's still hanging on in there. Look it's one of my clownfish. My clownfish. And my other clownfish, so beautiful! How can I talk about my tank without talking about my adorable little clownfish? My clownfish have been settling a lot more, but the thing is, every time I walk past the tank, because they're captive bred and they're used to being fed by humans, every time they see movement, they're like, feed me, feed me. So don't worry, they're not upset. It's just every time I walk past, they want food. If I put my hand up here, look, they're like, food, give me food. But these two are absolutely wonderful. They've settled in so beautifully and they haven't yet started really interacting with their anemone. They're not entirely sure what to do, but they are still very little. I'm sure they will learn in time how to interact with their anemone. Something you'll notice which is completely different from the very first time that you saw this tank is that there's a lot more live rock in there. And there's a reason why live rock is really great for your tank. It's You see all this red stuff? It's actually coralline algae. The coralline algae is really fantastic because it actually absorbs excess nutrients and it really helps to keep your water quality much much better than if you didn't have it. So if you can get hold of any live rock, it's really beneficial to your tank. That's why we actually got some more of it. You might have heard me saying that in my previous video that I didn't have much real estate to play with because all my coral and, and, and enemies were on top of each other. So I actually extended it down here or rather Danny extended it down here because I actually had some lotion on my hands and I didn't want to put my hands inside. So Danny very lovingly with me at the back being a total backseat land Scaper, um, or seascaper rather, um, was instructing where to put everything and it looks really lovely down here. Can you see these corals at the back here are so happy. Look at them, they've got little arms outstretched, they're waving around, they're catching their nutrients, they're absorbing their UV. These two are very happy. In fact down here this one's happy too. Look, I'm very happy with this section. Everyone on this section seems to be sort of at their 
their, their prime location. They're all very, very happy there. Now that I've given you guys an update on what's going on in my aquarium, um, I'm going to do some, some testing. I'm going to be using these Easy Strips by Tetra, and this is actually going to check the hardness of the water, the chlorine, the nitrates, the nitrites, the alkalinity, and the pH. When you are opening these, I'm actually going to put my camera down very quickly. The reason why is because when you open these to remove your strips, you want to make sure that you actually put the cap on really quickly because otherwise that can actually affect the validity of the reading. So let me go and get it out. Ah, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And done. Sealed. With this test strip, I'm going to just dip it in for one second and then pull it out again to read it after about 30 seconds. See, so ready? Let's do this. So it's in, swish around for a second and bring it out again. Starting at the bottom, we have the salinity and that's at ideal, which is great. Um, and then at the next one up is the total alkalinity, uh, which is 120, which is just about, oh, it's about ideal. Fantastic, that's also ideal. Um, the next two, which I will point to right now in post, those are not applicable. Um, the next one are the nitrites and that is safe great and then salt water is ideal so overall we're looking really really good very happy with that next i'll be testing the ammonia again the same thing applies you don't want to have the cap off of your bottle too long so let me just get my strip out with the ammonia strips you dip them in the water and swish them around for 10 seconds not just one second so let's do this together three four five six seven eight nine 10. Perfect. There we go. I think we're about ideal, ideal or safe. Actually, I think that is just bang on ideal. Woohoo. If I could start over again, I would start with just live rock in my aquarium and nothing else. No coral, no anemone, and no fish. If I had the chance to start again, I would go at an even slower pace to learn about every individual species of coral and anemone in depth before even adding them to my tank. This tank was purchased as a full setup, as it was an ex-display tank, and I think that having an established tank really did help me in the very early days, but I did miss out on that slow research step, which I really enjoy when keeping a new species. Jenny from Solid Gold Aquatics was kind enough to take the time to talk to me about fish keeping. I hope you enjoy this interview. An official Emzotic and Solid Gold Aquatics collab is coming very soon, as I'll be meeting Jenny at Playlist Live this weekend. Check out her details in my description box below. Well, I started my channel back in, oh my gosh, 2009 or 2010. And at the time, you know, YouTube did not have any monetization or anything. I was just using it as a place to put my goldfish related videos so I could share them on goldfish forums around the internet. And uh, they started actually, you know, I realized it was kind of fun to like put different cute uh, music tracks to the fish swimming around. And, you know, my videos were like, 40 seconds long, maybe two minutes, just like fish swimming around with cute music. But I noticed that those videos were actually getting, you know, a fair amount of views for what they were. And I also thought it was kind of fun making them, so I decided I was going to do it more. And they kept getting more and more views, so my channel started out mainly just about goldfish and that's it. But from a very young age, I've loved animals of all different kinds, and I just recently started kind of allowing myself to share my other animal-related passions with people on my YouTube channel, because life is too short to limit yourself to just one thing. What are some of the most common pitfalls you see new aquarists falling into? Oh my gosh, there's so many, and I learned from experience, let me tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I think the most important thing is especially for parents who are getting these, who are thinking about getting fish for their kids, just know that it's not an easy pet. It may seem like it because it's contained in the little box and you just, you know, it doesn't make much noise. It's pretty unintrusive in your daily life. Like a cat or a dog, you know, very, very hands-on, intrusive into your daily life. Uh, but I actually think, honestly, that a cat is easier than a fish. It's because a lot of people have this misconception that all a fish needs is water and it'll survive, but there's so much that goes into it. You know, even, even in this video, I could barely scratch the surface here. So so I would just say do your research beforehand because there is 
a whole world of fish keeping that you never even knew existed if you're not already in the fish keeping world yourself. Which fish, it can be salt water or fresh water, tropical, whatever you think, which fish would you recommend for a first time fish keeper? Ooh, you know, <laughs> this kind of goes into what I was saying. I never like labeling a pet as like an easy to keep pet because I find that people do that with leopard geckos and it, and goldfish and betta fish, any number of animals that they say this is an easy beginner pet and it leads to them getting I think mistreated because people go into it thinking it's going to be easy. Um, that being said, I do think that goldfish can be a good beginner pet, especially the more uh, what we would call pond body types. So that would be like a common goldfish, comet goldfish, things that have a slimmer body because they are pretty hardy and pretty tolerant to some beginner mistakes. You know, they're a little bit more forgiving than like the larger body, big fancy goldfish like you can see on my necklace here. These kind are really prone to issues. So I, if you're just starting out in pet keeping or in fish keeping, uh, I wouldn't necessarily jump right into like the extreme typed body types of the goldfish, but the common goldfish, the common goldfish would be definitely easier to start with. Keeping fish can be very complex. What is your advice for people who get into difficulty with their fish? Well, if you get into difficulty, I would say there is a huge wealth of information on the internet. You know, we're fortunate to live in this age that we do where you go online and you can learn almost anything that you could ever have a question about. You know what I mean? Um, the flip side of that is there's a lot of bad information on the internet too. So just make sure that you're vetting your sources and I would say don't get all of your information from one spot. Try to get a few different perspectives and then come up with what makes sense to you because you know some everyone's gonna have a different way of doing things and it may not work for your specific situation. And um, books are good too. You know, we're all so keen to go to the internet in, in today's day and age, but books still have a wealth of information as well that are, they can be a little bit more well vetted as opposed to the internet. Grim wanted to say hi. He was sniffing all the hi, camera Grim. equipment. And now he's, hey. oh, he's like, no. Denied. Sometimes people's circumstances change for whatever reason and they can no longer look after their fish or their aquariums. Some people even discard their fish down the toilet. What can people do if they can no longer care for their fish? You know, that's a really good question. I get so many I honestly get so many people reaching out to me almost on a daily basis saying, I can't keep my fish anymore, can you take them? And you know, they're across the country or sometimes even across the world. So, but I understand, you know, I'm putting myself out there as a public figure in educating people about fish so they don't know who else to go to. Um, but it's really easy. All you have to do is ask your local pet store, your local fish store more specifically. Like little mom and pop fish stores are really, really likely to take in unwanted fish and sometimes they'll even give you store credit for it. So maybe you don't want that fish anymore but you want a different one or you want to get some aquatic plants instead or some fish food. You know, a lot of times they'll take in your, your fish for you. <laughs> that is such wonderful advice and I think it's really important that people know that people can get into difficulty right. and ultimately there is always a way out that yeah. that won't contribute to neglecting your pet further so it, sometimes yeah. it can be sad to swallow your pride and to say look I'm way in over my head with this animal I can't just can't deal anymore <laughs> it's always better to find someone that can look after the animal rather than let it suffer and just yeah. hope that it sorts itself out because it doesn't happen and right. contrary to popular belief ladies and gentlemen not all drains lead to the ocean mm. so please don't <laughs> flush your fish even down if the they toilet. did a freshwater fish would not do well in the ocean but yes exactly. flushing I mean I know that wastewater is treated but there is also the issue of if you if you say if you release your fish into the wild which a lot of people think oh I'm doing my fish a favor by letting it go in this you know holding pond it's actually really really bad for the environment because if your fish is carrying any kind of disease, that, that disease can get into the larger environment and spread amongst the native fish. And, and not only that, but maybe, maybe there's another goldfish in that pond that somebody else released. They breed and they set up a breeding population of goldfish and wipe out the native fish in that, in that lake or ecosystem. So there's definitely good responsible ways to go about rehoming your fish. And it does happen. I mean, even just recently we had 
one of the maybe the biggest <laughs> YouTuber aside from PewDiePie, but Jenna Marbles. You know, she recently got some barbs in a little biorb tank. She thought she was doing everything right because she got information from a pet store about how to do things the right way. She later found out, thanks to the internet, that there were some things that she didn't do right, and she just brought the fish back to the store and. Everything was good, you know, people make mistakes. It's okay. What is the weirdest looking fish you've ever seen? Oh my gosh. I kind of like weird looking things, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's not going to be something gross, but, um, well, at least not to me. Um, the garden eel, have you ever seen these? No, I, I don't even okay, know what they so look like. Okay, it's so it's a saltwater eel, and they, if you've ever seen The Little Mermaid, it's kind of, yeah. I think it's what Ursula's little Garden of Unfortunate Souls is based off of. Really? So, you know, they had all the all the little things sticking up out of the substrate with the little sad faces. I, like, I have to look at these. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry look I'm not looking up. at the camera right now, but I want to see what they look like. Definitely So did you up. say they're called the garden eels? Garden eels, yes. Garden eels. And then, oh! <laughs> In a way, they're a little creepy, right? Because they just like poke up out of nowhere and like just they just like sway in the in the current. But you know I look love like, them. You know, you know when people do close-up videos of squeezing the paws around their nostrils. Oh that's what they look like. I can never look at them the same way again. Thank you, Em. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad that you will think of me now every time you think of garden eels and in particular yes. um, the paws around people's nostrils. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much to Jenny from Solid Gold Aquatics for talking to me a little bit more about fish and the fish community. You can definitely check out more from Jenny if you go and check out my description box down below with links to all her various social media. Thank you guys again all so much for watching and again thank you to Runaway who are sponsoring this video and in particular thank you for creating Splash which is the most incredible app. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye! Pudding, pudding, look at the pudding, look at the pud. Say hi to all the creatures, pudding. Say hi, creatures. Hi. You're so good. Eyes open, eyes close. Eyes open, eyes close. Eyes open, eyes close.